Warning. This video contains super awesome content not suitable for people who don't enjoy super awesomeness. Viewer discretion advised. I am Bradley with Blue Cord, and I've been asked by many who know me personally to make this video. Now, we're not a gun channel, but I appreciate and respect firearms. We're not a religious channel, but I have my religious point of view. And we're not a political channel, although I have my own political affiliations. I don't care what you look like, where you come from, what God you worship, what political affiliation you have. We live in the United States. This is America. I respect your right to your own opinions. It's one of the things that makes this country so great. Unfortunately, not everybody agrees with that sentiment. You have a lot of people out there that'll dislike somebody else just because of any of those things. And it's not right. The only thing I care about is how you treat other human beings. You treat them with dignity and respect, and I expect nothing less in return. Now this whole thing with Alec Baldwin is a horrific tragedy. I wasn't there. I don't know exactly what happened, and chances are neither do you, so everybody's going to establish some kind of opinion about this. It was a horrific, tragic accident that was easily preventable. This should never have happened. Before we get into the rest of this video, because I'm going to be doing some uh, demonstrations and some examples, I'm going to be showing you some blank cartridges versus live cartridges, and I'm going, for the first time ever on video, I'm going to show you what these look like and the effects that they actually have. Blank cartridges are still dangerous. On a personal note, uh, a number of years ago, I was visiting the home of a friend that I respect greatly. I was in a room with a lot of other people that were also there that day and they were passing around an antique firearm an old i believe it was a colt uh chambered in 25 acp that's automatic colt pistol although other pistols can fire that cartridge too they're passing around this little handgun and was telling everybody don't worry it's not loaded well several people handled it before it got to me and with my background the first thing that I do when I get this thing after several other people have handled it is I drop the magazine, I take the magazine out. The magazine for you non-gun people is a container with a spring that loads subsequent cartridges, which are bullets. They're not... We're going to go through some correct nomenclatures today. A cartridge is a bullet but i never call them bullets that's not what you call them so a bullet is a cartridge a round is a cartridge the first thing i do is i drop the magazine and to my surprise which i really wasn't terribly surprised there were cartridges bullets in the magazine the magazine was fully loaded and in that particular pistol, I think the magazine capacity holds six. So the next step is to physically inspect the chamber of the firearm. So that means you open up the action uh, in an automatic handgun, which means that it fires once every time you squeeze the trigger, as long as there's ammunition. I pull the slide back and I visually inspect the chamber where the cartridge would be 
if it were ready to fire. And son of a gun, if there wasn't a cartridge in there. I didn't show it at the time, but that really, that really shook me. Because here's a bunch of innocent people that are handling this firearm and all it would have taken was a gentle squeeze of the trigger and that would have fired it could have easily maimed or killed someone and in a pistol like that it would have fired that cartridge and automatically chambered the next one until the trigger was squeezed again I, I pointed it out immediately I said hey this is actually loaded guys and I unloaded it and made it safe and continued to pass it around uh, after it had already been locked and cleared. But it's something I've never forgotten. That just To this day, I just get a really strange feeling when I think about that. What if I had not been there? I don't know. I just don't know. But I'm glad nothing happened. I'm glad that I was there. And maybe I was there for a reason. Maybe I was there that day for that purpose. I don't know. I'll never know. I know you're here just to watch me blow some stuff up, but please bear with me just for a little bit longer. I have another very important, difficult story for me to tell, something very close and very personal to me. Three people very close to me were murdered. In two separate incidents, I really think you need to hear this. I spent over 10 years in the infantry. I was activated and deployed several times. It was after all that that I just wanted to get away from it all and live the rest of my life in peace. So we moved to a very small community in northern Maine a place where even most Mainers have never been. The day that we had all of our stuff moved up there in a 53-foot trailer, two good friends that we got to know when we moved up there stopped by to drop off a homemade dinner, some lasagna and other things. Really wonderful people. Heidi was my wife's co-worker and Mike who owned a garage in the nearby town of Holton. One day we received a, an emergency bulletin that went across the radio and all television stations that there had just been a double homicide, there was a murderer on the loose and for people to stay indoors and to be very careful. Well, a guy like me, I did not stay indoors. Uh, I grabbed my rifle and I started patrolling the 60 acres that we had, thinking that possibly this fugitive might be trying to hide. I'm glad it didn't turn out this way. I didn't find him. The state police did. And this was after he had already murdered two people, burned their house to the ground, stole their truck, drove to the nearby river, absconded with a canoe, and tried to escape, going downstream where he was eventually caught. It wasn't until later on that we found out that the two people that had been murdered in their home was Mike and Heidi. And here's the thing, most people in Northern Maine they are avid sportsmen. They know a lot about firearms. They own firearms. They use firearms. But most people are generally not as prepared as me. Once this home invader broke into their home, Mike and Heidi were defenseless. Mike, act Mike would have had to have quickly run to get his firearm. Me, I don't have to run anywhere because I always have it just in case, but it's something that still gets to me to this day that our good friends 
in a very small northern Maine town, were both murdered by a home invader. Didn't expect him to be there. He shot them both. Heidi didn't die right away. She managed to crawl to try to save her own life, hid behind a sofa, and then he burned the place to the ground. And that's how she died. So there are bad people in this world. I've seen a lot of it. So for you to think that nothing bad can ever happen to you is a nice thought, but it's not real. Another person close to me was brutally stabbed to death in his own backyard, my cousin Dennis. He was a decorated fighter pilot from Vietnam. After the Air Force, he pursued two master's degrees. He was a professor, really neat guy. He was spending some time in his beautiful backyard that was adjacent to a river. He was out back with his little dog and someone walking the trail that was right along the river between his property and the river saw a target of opportunity. No one knows for sure exactly what happened, but my cousin was stabbed multiple times. His body left in the backyard in July. The murderer covered his body in brush, lived in his home for several days, and my cousin's dog during the, the murder, during the stabbing, ran off in fear. One of the neighbors found her, brought her back to the house, knocked on the door, and this murderer answered the door and pretended to be my cousin. He was living in his house for three days while my cousin's body was out back. He was finally apprehended during a traffic stop using a stolen vehicle and a license plate that just seemed off. So here I am all these years after I got out of the army and I wanted to put all of that violence behind me and live the rest of my life in peace. Three people very close to me were brutally murdered. I've been meaning to make a video out of this for quite some time and I just wasn't sure of the reception. But after this latest tragedy with Alec Baldwin, I've been encouraged by a lot of people to take the time to do this. You know, I have a couple analogies, if you will, you know, for those people who don't believe in guns or don't think that people should own guns or firearms, bad things do happen because of bad people and it can happen to you. I wear my seatbelt every time I even move my vehicle. It's just a good habit that I've gotten into. And that's to say that seatbelts are very important. Not everybody wears them even though it's the law. Once you realize you're about to be in an accident, you do not have the time to put that seatbelt on. It's too late. I also have fire extinguishers in my home, in my work vehicle, not because I expect to have a fire, but I'm always prepared just in case. If something bad is happening to me and I call 911, the operators and law enforcement will absolutely respond to that as soon as they can. But even if it's minutes, it can already be too late. Anyway, I hope that all of you can appreciate this heartfelt moment for me and can imagine some of the things that I've seen some of the things that have happened to me, some things that I've done. I just want to live my life in peace. But there's plenty of evil out there. 
and it affects a lot of really good people. So let's continue on to the next part of this video and I'm going to show you some blank cartridges and live cartridges side by side you can see the difference. Now there are different types of blanks, lots of different types. The ones I'm going to show you today are used by the United States military and other NATO forces. Okay, the first cartridges I'm going to start with are the standard rifle round for the United States and other NATO countries and that is the 5.56 NATO which is almost the same as the 223 the 5.56 just fires a little bit faster so here you can see this is a blank cartridge and you can see how the end is crimped and it's purple on the end there's no denying that this is a blank cartridge and this is a standard ball round and ball meaning that it's just a piece of lead with a copper jacket now next up this is the 7.62 nato used by back in my day the old m60 machine gun today the m240s and some others used by other nato countries around the world so this is a blank cartridge, but again, there's a lot of gunpowder in here, and it comes out very fast, and you cannot be too close to anything when you shoot one of these. I'm going to do a demonstration of that here in a little bit. Here we have several different cartridges for the 50 caliber Browning machine gun, or 50 BMG. And here you can see all of them, Side all the 50 cartridges I brought out with me today lined up you have the blank cartridge the armor piercing cartridge incendiary tracer cartridge and an old style armor piercing with the plastic driving band and here's the projectile itself for an incendiary tracer now we're going to do the fun part and we're going to do a test to show you how much damage a blank cartridge can actually do now, right now I have live rounds in here and again this is one of those things you do not ever want to mix live rounds with your blank ammunition ever you can see here I'm using the standard green tip NATO round we're gonna make sure this magazine isn't anywhere near me when I'm doing the test with the blank cartridge only thing is I'm gonna be firing one shot at a time and I'm not gonna be using the magazine so there won't be any chance to get live ammunition mixed in with the blanks now because blanks still contain a lot of gunpowder, they are still very loud. Especially in this enclosed environment, I'm going to put on my headset just to protect what's left of my hearing. Now you can single load these. It's a bit of a pain, but it is possible to load this one shot at a time without the magazine. Okay, we got the other GoPro filming on high speed. We're gonna go ahead, fire one shot. You'll see what it's gonna to do to the paper. In the Army, we had a rule. We were not allowed to engage targets with blanks within 15 feet, because this gunpowder is coming out very, very fast and can cause serious harm, as you'll see here in a second. Any doubts now? It doesn't matter, blanks or live ammunition, you are still going to cause a lot of harm. That's serious. I have a few other pieces of paper here. I have never done this test with more than just 
one piece of paper at a time. I'm going to do this again. I think I have like four or five sheets over there still. Let's do it one more time and see what we got. We have a few more sheets here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have seven sheets here. We'll set this up and we'll see what happens. Now, if you're ever in doubt and you're not sure that there's a cartridge in here, you can pull it back a little bit on an M4 style until you can see the brass in there. So I know there's a cartridge in there. I won't be able to tell if it's fired or not, but I know there's a cartridge in it. Since I just loaded this, I know we're ready to go. We're hot. We're going to see if this will punch through seven from about 12 inches away. While this didn't punch through all seven, you can see the stippling here caused by the very high velocity gunpowder as it flies out the end at over 5,000 feet per second. And I'm not sure the exact expansion rate of this particular gunpowder, but it's fast. So let's take a look here. This is the first page, and you can see that pierced through the first page went into the second page, went into the third page, and you can definitely see there's some very high velocity impacts here. And you can still see if the light is correct. You can still see the indentations on the paper and this is page four page five still indentations essentially what happens is and there are other tests on YouTube that show this if your hand or skin is anywhere in the vicinity of that accelerating gunpowder it's gonna rip you open pretty badly and depending on where you get hit can cause serious injury or even death I know some of you want me to talk about this thing. This is a pretty cool thing. I use this for uh, close-in defense for my home. This is manufactured by Diamondback in Florida. Yes, this is licensed. This is registered. I absolutely believe in the right of Americans and anybody in the world to protect themselves. If there is someone who's breaking into my home, they want to take what I have. I do not know what lengths they will go to to get what they want. I hope you all appreciate this video and my taking the time to share some very personal and very painful stories from my life. I'm not advocating firearms, but I do advocate a person's inalienable right to protect themselves and to any other aspect of their lives that they live as they see fit in the pursuit of their own happiness. Our forefathers, they were a brilliant bunch of good men. And as brilliant as they were, I don't believe could have foretold all of the advancements and technology that we've seen over the last 250 years. Social media, how news, pictures, video, opinions can instantly travel across the entire globe is something that no one could have foreseen back then. You know, social media does a lot of good, but it also does a lot of harm. 
a lot of opinions are spread, a lot of hate is spread. I love everybody. I treat everybody equally. Everybody, the first time I meet you, starts out on the same neutral plane, and depending on whether you go up or down is entirely up to you. You treat me and others with dignity and respect, I reciprocate. I treat you with dignity and respect. I would, I would just love to see everyone think that way. And it's not a reality, unfortunately. That's the world we live in. There's a lot of great people. And unfortunately, there are a few bad ones. So with that, I'll end it here. And again, thank you for joining us today, even on this somber topic. I do appreciate it. And uh, keep smiling. We've got lots of great new Ventrac videos and other things coming up here in the near future. So if you haven't already, please hit that like button because that helps our channel. Make sure you're a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be the first to know about any new videos that are coming out, hit the notifications bell. And you'll be notified right away. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.